So there's all these things that happen when you click that button, which I've been working on for like a week or two. Uh, you have to lerp the camera to this position. So I have to use a timeline node and then the FBX animation for that puck opened up. Uh, and then we have this radial circle menu. So there's like a tutorial I use for the, the radial circle menu. This is the one which was excellent. Um, the, the Your Sandbox channel was like, I mean, this was amazing. It was really good. He went over everything. Uh, I was able to understand what was going on. And then, uh, so I implemented the basics of this and I, I started to manipulate it a little bit. So the one that he has, it has like equal pie slices. Um, and so we kind of needed something different. Uh, so, but it, it was a great starting point. So, uh, for example, if we look at this, we'll see that we have uh, this wide piece here, a small slice here, a small slice here, and then two wide pieces. So I had to modify the algorithm to support that. Um, I tried to test out controller support for it. Um, the controller support doesn't seem to work for 3D widgets. So this is a combination of 3D widgets, a custom material on an image and then some blueprint code to get this like radial behavior and then as a 3d widget i was able to stuff it on the desk and put it at the angle that i wanted so because i wanted to be relative to this to this book i did something at some point to mess with the it's like kind of too low it should be a little bit higher which i'll you know just fix that fix that later so we have this and then i have uh, cancellation states now so you can click off we have this in web dev. You click off, and the it'll go away. It'll only despawn. Um, there's also this these events that fire. Oh gosh, I gotta deal with it. So there's events that fire to where the UI is listening, and so it'll hide like irrelevant parts of the menu and it changes the name. Um, we can now click the center, and it turns into like a drag mode, so you can reposition. The, the ship and then have the close animation go off whenever it loses focus. So that's fun. The camera also centers, which the center camera thing is like really important for this circle menu to work because of the algorithm that detects where where you are in the radial menu. So, okay, so that's cool. Now, um, let me see. The radial menu. Where are you? I think it's in here. Yeah, so it was a number of things to get this up. So I had trouble because this, this was like the first sort of complicated blueprint hierarchy. So I guess we'll start with the, blue, the blueprint for the vapor gram, which is like a little hologram emitter. All right, so we have... We have this. So this vaporgram here, when you first spawn it, it'll just play the idle animation, which it doesn't really have one. Like I suppose I planned on making one, but it doesn't really have one. Okay, so it just sits still. And then there's an event that it listens for. So when the player focuses on it, it'll play an animation to open. And then we will do some transform gymnastics, right? We don't want to mess with the scale but we do want to grab the location and the rotation and then use that to spawn the widget. So I created this, well, it's actually another blueprint, which is a little a little confusing. So when I looked at the docs, there was Unreal 4 had a slightly different way of dealing with 3D widgets. So let's see, I have to find it, it's in here, yeah. So this widget arc menu. So we're gonna spawn this because we need something to hold the uh, what is it called? Activatable widget. So this is common UI. If it, if it's not using common UI, then it would be called a user widget. So initially I had it as a user widget, but I tried to put it as common UI to get controller support in there, but that didn't work. So which is fine. I can deal with that later. So this is a different blueprint. And so what we have is a vaporgram. Whenever it's it's focused on, it will spawn this guy. Um, and all this is, is just the, it's got a widget in there, and then we've set the material to this, um, yeah, translucent, one-sided, and there was a, there was a catch with this, 
Okay, I went to my own forum post because I couldn't remember where it was, which is why I make them. Because <laughs> like, I can, and the, these videos too, because it's just there's so much and it just gets forgotten, right? Okay, so there's a blend mode and it says it's on the widget component. So let me look for that real quick, because that's the this should be the widget component, and so it's called blend mode. I thought it was called mask, but I think mask is the setting it's on. So by default, if you look at this, um, it's fine. But if you don't have that, it'll do this. It's all dark. Yeah, lovely. I mean, it looks kind of cool in one sense, but it's sort of useless. Um, so there's that. I have to make sure that that is on transparent, which works the way you would expect. And you'll notice that in the preview here, it doesn't actually show you. It probably has something to do with my shader settings. Like maybe it's a the post shader settings that I've got. I'm not entirely sure, but it was a big deal for to find that setting, which I couldn't find and was literally just poking around to, get, to find that. So that was a big component. Um, once you have this widget, it, you'll select a class somewhere. Like here it is. So WPV Vaporgram Arc, which is really just a 2D widget component. So you have your standard standard setup here. So in here, we have all this logic, and this is from the tutorial that that I mentioned earlier. So I did modify it, so it's different, uh, but effectively, you know, it does some math on the mouse mouse position on the screen with the center of the screen. And so that's why it's important to center on that puck, which it looks better anyways when, you know, frankly, so we're just gonna, that, that works out. But then um, I have this, all these settings for min mount, min boundary, max boundary. Uh, then there's like sector size multiplier, which is what we're using to determine how big the sector should be drawn. And I had to make a modification, make a modification to the material to support that as well. So. And it, this is modifying the, the material live. And that's basically it to just get that, that view. And so when you're moving around, it just modifies. Uh, I think I have this. Yeah, find current sector meta, which given a Euler angle will detect based on this min max bounds. It finds the index and then it just grabs the other metadata. So I could probably put that in a struct to make it cleaner. But yeah, we just want to find the find the index, min min angle, and size. Turns out we didn't really need max angle for the algorithm, but stored it anyways. Uh, what else do we have? Yeah, so when select happens, um, then we publish some events, which we have this like event system set up, uh, and it'll you know there could be things listening for that event, so things like the menu sliding out and hiding itself. Because like right now we're dealing with this puck here, and so like the menu is not really related to that directly, and so this will hey look it's hidden. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so the menu is not related to that, but it is listening for that event. So if it sees like this dra this uh, focus state, it'll go away, and if it sees that the focus state is let off, then it comes back. So that's the advantage of that uh, event system where we can have it be decoupled so where this uh, blueprint here doesn't know who's listening for that event it doesn't need to and I can I can just assign things later as needed so it, it is more complicated though like it's not for the faint of heart event systems are a bit of a mess to debug like if you don't yeah if you don't, if you didn't make it <laughs> that that makes it worse and because uh, you don't know all the events and th there's not really like a good mechanism for troubleshooting that either because uh, unreal doesn't we're like firing this off and then this ends up getting captured in this uh publisher over here got mixed up the variable section okay so yeah we have these things happen right where it pulls all this in and then based on the event it'll fire off uh, it have different parsing logic, and then, and then it calls, but it doesn't know. Like it's just calling the um, 
it just calls the method on the subscriber, so it doesn't really know who it is. Uh, so that can be difficult to troubleshoot, like if if the game gets too big. So it's not great for, I think, everything, but it's good for menus and it's good for, which this game is he heavily menu focused, right? So it, it actually fits. All right, so yeah, and then we have this on player drag that fires, but you'll see that we have parent widget and then there's parent vaporgram. So I had to chain it all together. So a switch review to get this widget thing working to this this 3D widget, we have the the original model that we want to trigger it with, and then we have a blueprint that holds as a container, and all it does is it, it just holds the, the widget component, and so that's important. It's pretty thin on the blueprint side. There's not much in here, so there's some initialization code that gets the uh, blueprint object and just stores it as a variable, and then we do some things like set the, who the parent is, um, I tried to activate the widget, like I said, for the controller. doesn't work. I'm just going to move on from that one. And then there's this, like, event tick here that keeps the uh, keeps things in sync. So that's, that's really, it just keeps it in sync. Because if you don't, when you click and drag and move it away, this thing will just stay like, in place. So we need it to stay, we need it to stay with the parent. Um, and then this guy is what is being referenced here. So it took these three different entities to get this to work, um, not to mention all of the shader code that went with it as well. So it was a it was a bit of a journey. It, it's been in some of my other videos, but it hasn't gotten to a satisfactory point where I could kind of talk about it. So this is the same thing as a tutorial, tutorial video. Uh, I haven't even added in my own uh, custom textures or mess with the colors yet, and I'm not going to for a little while. It's just going to look like this. Um, and there's some functionality that we didn't need, like we didn't need the previous selected, so I think I just turned that off. Yeah, I set it up here as black, but that's still still in there. Um, yeah, so it still supports it, but it, I'm not going to use it. So, Which the idea behind that is like, that was the previous thing you selected, and so like in an adventure game, or or some other game type that would be useful, but for this one, it it doesn't it doesn't make sense. So uh, I just I changed the organization a little bit, but overall it is doing exactly the same thing. And I think in the beginning, yeah, we have this sector count and and sector size, and that's the main the main modification. Uh, everything else is pretty similar.